Guys, so far this golf season, my wedges have been a huge disappointment. I'm here with two familiar faces, Max and Ken from Titleist. They're gonna fit me for brand new SM9 wedges and they're gonna give you guys some info how to pick the right wedges for you. Okay guys, we're looking at the brand new, I guess they're not technically brand new. Yeah, they're one year. They're one year into a two-year life cycle. And Titleist doesn't pump out new clubs every year. It seems like it's a two-year life. Two-year life cycle for everything, which allows us to truly develop superior product, as opposed to just bringing out more product for marketing purposes. We want to make everything that we ever launch definitely better than what came before it. So, give me a quick little briefing on the uh, SM9 lineup. Sure. So SM9, so that would be ninth generation of the spin milled wedges uh, designed by Bob Volke, who is a proud Canadian. We have uh, four different finishes if you count the raw finish. So we've got three regular inline finishes. We've got the Tour Chrome, which is the bright silver. We've got the brush steel, which is really a cool look there. It's uh, got a little bit of a, almost a coppery look to it. And then the jet black, the all black. And then of course we have the raw wedges. Raw, as you can see by these well-used wedges, these are actually Max's wedges. They really rust up. And a lot of the guys on tour seem to like the, the raw wedges, but uh, we really have a, uh, a fairly equal breakdown. When we fit somebody and give them the option to choose which, which look they like the best, it's pretty equal. It's usually right around a third, a third, a third. Yeah. Well, it's funny looking at Max's wedges. I'm like, wow, how did these 10 year old Vokies get in the, uh, the new bay? <laughs> but that's just the raw. That's just finished. the raw. Yeah. Yeah. They just, uh, as, as they, if they get wet, they will, they will definitely rust up. So cool. Yeah. So really the most important thing about Vokey wedges is all the different varieties of bounce and grind. That's really what the fitting is going to come down to is making sure that each player gets the right bounce and the right grind for their game. Uh, in bounce, we're usually going lower bounce or higher bounce for players based on their turf interaction, how steep or how shallow they are. And then grind, we're working on uh, what types of shots they like to play, if they like to flop the face opener, if they kind of keep it more square and that's where we kind of make the decisions on which grinds to go with but uh, we just have so much variety we've got seven different grinds and and a huge variety of bounce all the way from four degrees to 14 degrees of bounce wow and that is how we're going to dial you in for better wedges so you can uh, play some better golf because I know it's been a bit of a challenge so far this year. It's been terrible. Like it's actually comical. <laughs> if you guys saw me chipping like the last two, three weeks, it's painful. So I'm really excited to get into this fitting. Max is going to take over the fitting. Ken, thanks for the product knowledge. Absolutely. And uh, I know the Titleist community is going to appreciate you guys being on the video. So thanks, Ken. Thank you. Cool. Have a good one. Okay, let's go. Looking at the bag here, you got some Mira blades in here. Uh, we got a pitching wedge. We're going to start here with the pitching wedge. Okay. You mentioned around the greens, potentially with the 58, not quite as confident that it's gonna pop up as easy as you were when you were using the 60 before. It's true, I used to have a 60 and around the greens, especially like short-sided, I felt comfortable in getting the ball in the air. Since having the 58, it's kind of hit or miss. Okay. So I'm open to playing around with the lofts of the wedges. Okay. So we'll look at gapping and make sure that we can give you good gapping and hopefully give you the 60 in there as well and uh, kind of find, find a way to make both things happen for you. Okay, cool. Okay, so we'll start with the pitching wedge. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the ball speed that you're producing with your pitching wedge, and we're gonna look for about a five mile per hour gap coming down here. So you want full swings? Yeah, full swings, just how you'd hit pitching wedge on the course. I should let the audience know that we're filming at the Glencoe Golf and Country Club, which is by far the best practice area in all of Calgary. It is a beautiful private golf course, and I'm so grateful for them to let us film here. You guys are gonna love the views out at Glencoe. Okay. Swing there. With your full swings, if you're gonna miss, are you gonna miss a little bit skinny over fat usually on the course? Oh, it's hard to say. This driving range is so immaculate. I almost feel guilty <laughs> taking a divot here. But yeah, typically I would say I would miss skinny over fat. Okay. Kind of like that. Okay. And you're playing most of your golf at Country Hills, correct? I do, yep. And the grass there is perhaps a little bit tighter than what you're seeing on It's the... definitely tighter. I find that we're drier and shorter grass. Pretty firm out there too. Very hey? firm, yep. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, right over the stick there. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to start you in a 50 degree. Okay. I'm going to start you in the lower bounce of the two. So when you're talking about bounce, yes. that's the sole of the wedge we're talking about, right? Yeah, so that's going to be on the sole. The actual bounce is not what's marked on the club. So the, it's the effective bounce that's marked on the club. Okay. So if we're talking about bounce, we've got two extremes here. We've got the four degree T grind and the 14 degree K grind. So if we look at these, the bounce is a combination of the angle on the bottom and the depth of the wedge. That's gonna create the effective bounce. The actual bounce is the angle on the bottom, but the angle can be manipulated for how it's gonna play. Okay, so the T grind here is a very, very narrow leading edge here. And what that does, that lets the leading edge sit really close to the ball so that you can get under it really easy when it's a really tight lie. Uh, the K grind has a much deeper sole. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna create uh, a little bit more bounce or effective bounce so that when you come in, that trailing edge is gonna wanna hit the ground easier compared to this one which is gonna to help to keep the club out of the ground. So cool. I don't even think I've ever seen a T-bounce in person. Yeah, so this is this is really popular on tour right now. Um, a, a lot of the guys are using it. Wow. If you lay that one open, you can lay it dead flat and that leading edge is still basically wow. under the level of the grass. Crazy. Versus this one. It See how that sits up, yeah. up above the level? And you're talking about this leading edge here. Yes. Put them side exactly. by side. Flying yeah. flat, this is coming off where this yeah. is like still flat with the ground. Yeah. So easy. cool. Yeah. So why did you choose this wedge for me out of the gate? So out of the gate, definitely seeing a contact pattern that's going to be a thinner miss over a thicker miss. And that's even when we've got a little bit more of a, a fluffier lie here. Okay. If we get down to a tighter lie and the ball sits down a little bit more, it's you're going to need that lower... I, I suspect you're gonna need that lower bounce, but we're gonna find out. Gotcha, okay. Awesome, good solid contact there. Yeah, that felt really good, uh, right out of the gate. I should tell the audience too, the wedges that I am currently playing, just so that they know. Mm -hmm. So I do have the, I think they're the Ping Glide Forged. So what we're looking for is we're, ideally we're looking for contact between the third and fifth grooves. If anything, I'm seeing, you're getting up to that fourth groove a little bit, nothing really on that fifth groove. If anything, we're seeing a little thin still. Okay. We'll try this just in case, in case you deliver it a little bit differently. So what's changed in this wedge? So this is also a 50 degree, but this is the 12 degree F grind. Okay. Sounded good there. It's the first time I've went left. Interesting. Did you say interesting? I did. Why? Oh, that's looking pretty good to start. <laughs> really good. Now, have you been aware of, of the difference in the wedges here or are you just swinging away? Okay, so visually, the finish is different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But as far as setup, like looking at it, they look they, similar. They should to me. look the same. Yeah. yeah. Is that true? You're you're really not going to be able to see much difference okay. in in that leading edge. It's going to be more of a performance difference. And performance difference is probably the biggest thing that I see. Yeah. I've been over that pin more with whatever you just gave me than the first one. Yeah. Even okay. left. So contact here, we're definitely hearing that difference in the sound, hey? Eh? Yeah. And if you look here at the contact, we're just a little bit toey, but it's right about that third to fifth groove is where we're seeing that. So just the way you deliver this one, you came in better with this than mm. you did with the lower bounce. Cool. Okay, so we'll start with that one. I'm gonna put that one aside here. Now in your, in your sand wedge, you've got a 54 right now. Yeah. Where are you using that one? Are you using that one around the greens much? Are you using it mostly as a full swing club? Most like 99% of it is in the fairway or a full swing club. Okay. So for me, it's like my one 18 to 25 okay. club, mm -hmm. but I rarely, I rarely use it greenside in the bunkers. I primarily use my 58 for anything around the green. Okay. We should remind everyone that we're filming in Calgary, which is elevated. So if like 125 sound wedge sounds ludicrous, we're at like, 
I forget it's been so long since we've done elevation. We've got it set at about 3,300 feet here. It changes throughout the city. We've got a couple of high spots, a couple of low spots with the river valley. So I'm gonna start you in a 54 in the sand wench. Okay. We'll see what these are doing for you. We'll see where the ball speed gap comes out here. Okay. Ball speed gap was pretty good from that 50 degree. So we're right in that five mile per hour gap, maybe just a fraction on the higher side, but okay. that's gonna be okay as we lead in. If we're trying to get down to a 60, if we stretch those gaps to a six mile an hour gap, okay. that's gonna be okay. okay. And did you say you were gonna use it in a longer bunker shot in the sand wedge or not really? I try to never have a long bunker shot, <laughs> but I have. <laughs> Don't we all? I have in the past. Okay. But it's primarily like if it's up, if I'm in the fairway, lob wedge isn't enough. Like mm -hmm. I keep four wedges, mm -hmm. primarily for full swings. Okay. And just while we're on the topic of full swings with wedges, are you gonna take a pretty full cut with the with the 58 as well, or is it gonna be? Definitely full swings. I try to swings. like, I try to all my wedges, I try to just 80% swing okay. them, but 100% I'm taking full swings okay. with these wedges. Okay, sounds good. So I'm gonna start you in the 54 degree with the F grind. Okay. The F grind is our most commonly used sand wedge here on tour. Oh really? Which is surprising to people because it's that higher bounce option. People I think there's a little bit of a connotation that some of the guys on tour will mostly use lower bounce wedges, but they're looking for a little bit of versatility to give them some different options around the greens and on the golf course. The F grind is going to be that little bit of versatility in a lot of their bags. Cool. That sounded really good there. Mm -hmm. How often should people replace their wedges? So with the wedges, our research has shown that you're looking at about 75 rounds before you lose 10% of your spin from groove wear. Really? So that's where we like to recommend them. For competitive players, you should probably be looking at replacing them sooner. If you're a little bit more casual, you might want to stretch that out a little bit, get a little bit more use out of your wedges, but that's that's a pretty good benchmark that we hmm. look at. Cool. So all those guys that are watching this and they've had the same wedges for 10 years should probably consider uh, a wedge fit. <laughs> it's time, it's time. <laughs> Good swing there. Let me take a look at where you got, uh, where we're striking that there. Pretty good, just a little toey. It's in a good strike pattern. Let's try that one. So that one's the D grind. D grind. Any difference in feel here compared to the one before? I, I feel it more on the toe. The other ones I didn't necessarily feel toe until you kind of said, I'm like, oh yeah, that could be true. But this one, I don't know why I just feel more toe strikes. Certainly the, the turf interaction with that F grind sounded a little more consistent to me. We'll just try this one, just try that as well. So that's the S grind there. So that's that's gonna be a couple degrees less bounce here. So we're, let's say five minutes into this fitting mm -hmm. and you've given me like six or seven different varieties of wedges. Yep. This is something that you couldn't just know to pick yourself if you're at a local golf store chipping around. Not Not effectively, I'd say. If you've gotten a really good understanding of what's going on, you can, make a halfway informed decision, but you're not gonna get the same results uh, without going through a fitting process. Makes sense, which is why I'm a huge advocate for getting fit. If you guys saw the TSR3 video and Max dialed in the driver for me, it was a huge difference to see where we started to where we finished, yeah. which I'm anticipating the same results when we finish here, Max. So uh, okay. we, got, we got some weight on your shoulders. For context, we have a, a wedge selector tool that you can use online. It's gonna give you the right idea um, and it's gonna be pretty close, but just to know with 100% confidence that you're picking the right ones. Because if you're gonna spend the money, you may as well get the right ones, right? right? And are there wedges, let's say, that are geared to a high handicapper or to a low handicapper, or how does that work for wedges? No, so it's, it's, all, it's all about finding the right bounce and grind for your game. And especially with higher handicappers, you see a bigger variety in how they interact with the ground and come into the ground. You could see them being very shallow, and coming in and hitting up on their wedges, or they could be really steep, and it, it could be you could be anywhere in between. So it's it's all about getting fit and finding the right ones for you. Because I know drivers now are kind of geared to a forgiving driver or a draw bias driver, where wedges you're saying is kind of fair game. Yeah. A high handicapper and a low handicapper could play the same wedges in theory. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Whoops. I watched that stupid video of Tiger Woods on the range with Scotty Scheffler. Did you see that video? <laughs> and Tiger's like, Tiger says, when I'm flushing it, I'm never taking divots. Uh -huh. And even if he was joking, that's been in the back of my mind subconsciously ever since I watched that video. Uh -huh. If we did this video a year ago, I would have beaver pelts on this range. Uh -huh. But I don't know why watching that stupid Tiger video, I'm not taking <laughs> any grass. I 
can't remember who whose story it was. They were out on on tour and he was on the range beside Tiger and Tiger hit. I don't know how long he hit, but he looked over and every ball he could hear was just perfect sound, flush, flush, flush. And he looked over and it didn't look like there was a, t a blade of grass out of place. Well, so maybe it is true. A lot of a lot of guys will see that with wedges. So I think the wedge, the wedge is that one club in the bag that gives people the opportunity to have a shoe size divot, right? Mm -hmm. Like it'll just kind of cut through the, through the grass. Let's see where that one was struck in the face. That sounded like you just got under it a little bit more there, hey? It's pretty good. I seem to still be favoring the toe side. Yes. What's notable for you is these are a quarter inch shorter than what you're playing in your iron length. And so when we get something that's a little bit short, it's gonna lead, it's often gonna lead to a, uh, a little toe strike pattern. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned to see that out just a little bit towards the toe, knowing that we're gonna be a little bit longer here. What I notice here in this S grind is your contact pattern, still not seeing anything above that fifth groove here. Mm. So knowing that this is gonna be a little bit fluffier or um, the ball's gonna sit a little bit higher here compared to where you're playing. So far, this one's looking pretty good. Mm. Uh, spin numbers wise, you were creating a lot of spin with this one and more spin compared to the other ones. Sometimes that can be an indication that contact's more consistent. Variance in the spin, you had one that you pulled, Yeah. but your variance here was 683 spin up or down. You see how the spin dropped down with that D grind? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit less consistent there. Okay. okay. I'm liking this one. Did you have a preference between the three? No, it felt really good. Yeah. I think that's the one for you. And I really like this finish too. What do you call this finish? That one's the brush steel. So far, like visually looking at them, this is kind of like, a, it's almost like a gun metal, kind of like a coppery gun metal. How will this wear over time? I've got, so these are, these are fitting wedges. So they're, they've got some, some wear in them a little bit. You can kind of see how the, the finish just gets a little bit oh, okay, more brushed on the, on the bottom there where yeah. it's, on the sole where the turf interaction is and we're interacting with a little bit of dirt and sand. That's kind of how it's gonna wear. It's pretty minor. You had some, I think it was your wedges that are the raw finish that yes. are rusty. Yeah. I think there's a perception about wedges that are rusty create more spin. True it's or false? False. False, okay. So what, did, what would be a benefit to a wedge wearing like yours do? In terms of the face, we don't wanna see the face rust. As the face rusts, it'll wear a little bit quicker and it's not gonna pro provide additional spin. So most of the tour guys are using these. A lot of them are doing that so they can provide a little bit of extra polish or uh, they can grind a little bit differently off the sole if they have a certain spot, they want a little bit extra relief. Hmm. So that's kind of the reason a lot of them are doing it. Cool. Well, something I haven't asked you about yet is shafts. Yes. The, are all the shafts the same that you've given me yes. so far? Yeah, okay. so all of my shafts in the fitting wedges are all the Vokey wedge flex. Okay. It's a dynamic old S200. I got you. So yeah. that would be like a stiff shaft. It's it's a heavier stiff shaft. Yeah. Stiff plus. Uh, so it's it's a stiff, but it's it's 128 grams. So it's it's oh, on the it's, heavier oh, range. It's literally heavier. Yeah. Got you. Because okay. yeah, in my wedges, I have the same iron shafts that I was using all the way to like my four iron. Mm -hmm. Is that common? Would you recommend that? Like, how do you pick the right shaft in a wedge fitting? Yeah. So shafts in a wedge fitting. It's personal preference in a lot of it. Um, a lot of people will stick with that wedge flex. There's a reason we have those in there. With that S200, we're, we're in a heavier shaft and that's helping to produce, uh, produce a little bit lower flight for most players. For you, you're taking full swings with your wedges and you're swinging them relatively fast. So I'm probably leaning towards sticking with the same shaft that you're using in your irons to keep that consistent feel. For some players, they swing their wedges softer mm. and they don't take as aggressive a swings with them. And for them, they might want to go to a softer flex and get something they're going to get a little more response from. Gotcha. Okay. okay, cool. Where do we go from here? So I'm going to jump up into the 60 here. Okay. Based on the gapping that I'm seeing, you're producing enough ball speed with that 54 that if we bend it to a 55, we're going to be still in a good gap spot. And so I think if you want to get that little bit extra versatility around the greens to have a little bit more trust that you can get up, mm -hmm. we can uh, we can bridge okay. that gap. So now we're going 60. This is the 60 here, yep. That feels good, Max. Yep, looks good. Let me just take a look at uh, the contact there. 
Awesome. Okay, I'll give you this one. Okay. That one sounded a little different there. How'd that one feel? It's... I don't think it felt as good as the first one. Okay. But it looked really good. Okay. Like that flight looked awesome. All right. I've seen what I need to see here. Ball speed wise, we're looking a little bit shy on that 60 there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's head over to the short game area. Let's do it. Okay guys, so we're lucky enough that Glencoe has probably the absolute best short game area in all of Calgary. You probably have seen more courses. It could be the best it's in all of Canada. Lot. We're gonna head over there. We're gonna do some bunker stuff mm -hmm. and then maybe some stuff around the greens. Absolutely. Okay, let's head yeah. over there. So now we're at green side and we're gonna look at 58 and 60. Okay. Gapping wise, the 60 came out a little bit slow on the ball speed. So we'll take a look. We'll see if the 58 is going to give you enough around the greens. If it's not, we could look at bending a 58 to a 59, or we can take the 60 and just accept a little bit further back gap. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So green side here, we've got really good bunkers at the Glencoe. If you want to take a feel just to see and how they compare to Country Hills, sure. that's going to be uh, a primary thought for you is how the green side conditions are going to change from here versus where you're gonna play. Right. If they're gonna be a little softer, we might need to steer towards a little bit extra bounce versus what we fit for. If they're gonna be a little firmer, we might need to steer. Or if they're close, we're gonna be pretty good with what we see there. Cool. Okay. Okay, so we're going short-sided right off the bat. You're really gonna test my sand game. Yep. Okay, pretty good there. Got through the sand pretty well. How would you describe bunkers your bunker game as a, as a strength in your game, is it? Uh, certainly not a strength. I'm in them enough that I should have enough practice in them, but I don't. Honestly, Max, like I'm here because my short game all around is just trash okay. lately. So I'm hoping that these wedges can help accelerate my short game. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I, you know, I, I hit bombs. Like I, I hit it far, <laughs> but, but the short games has, this year has not been great. In years past, like it's funny, the more you practice, the better at something that you uh, get. And I haven't mm -hmm. put enough time as I should into short game. Yep. But no, it's definitely the worst part of my game right now. Okay. Nice there. Okay, nice little action on that. We'll give you one more to hit there. Okay. And with your bunker game, if you're gonna miss, if anything, these are a little bit on the heavier side, are you gonna play more of a chunk and run as opposed to a- Chunk and run is not in my vocabulary out of the sand trap. Okay. Getting out is my first mission. Okay. Everything after that is, can I get it can you to get it 10 close? feet? <laughs> okay. All right, let's try this one. Nice height on that one. This shot is new for me. I posted a video on Instagram the other day with a terrible short side of green side bunker and I had like 50 uh, self-proclaimed golf coaches tell me how to get it up. <laughs> and how did it work out for well, you? Well, so they were telling me to just take my club way steeper higher swing to the left so that's kind of what i'm thinking of okay do you agree with that i'll maybe reserve comments on that one. okay we'll get there we'll get there okay that's going to be the miss you're going to see yeah that, for sure with that sort of oh, with this bounce well with that bounce and with that thought oh okay so that's a little bit less bounce and right away we saw two swings in we saw a miss mm -hmm. with a little bit less bounce it came out a little bit heavy right right so we'll keep an eye on that one i'm going to give you a little bit more bounce for reference. So I'm gonna give you the K grind here. This is a little bit more bounce. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, okay. You see how that popped the ball through, or that slid through the turf a little bit, or sorry, not the turf, the sand. Yeah. That really went through the turf. Yeah. That wasn't a little ready bit for more that. speed, a little bit less resistance. Hmm. Pretty good there. A little well, bit my, heavy. There's my tightest one. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this one back. This one was the D grind. Okay. And now knowing your game, I know you play around with the club face a little bit. You're gonna open it, you're gonna close it on sh certain shots. Let's see you hit this one, and I'm gonna get you to open the face a little bit more than you did before. Awesome. Really, really good. Yeah, see a little bit good. of jam on that one? Yeah. As it tried to grab, yeah. Yeah. For me personally, what I do when I get a little bit more sand versus less sand, that's gonna change the way I'm opening and closing the face in the bunker. When you get less sand, the club's not gonna wanna dig as much. And so to get in under the sand and use the same amount of bounce or have the same amount of bounce out of the ground, you need to have a little bit less open face. But when you get into somewhere that there's a lot of sand and it's your feet are sinking in, you gotta open the face a little bit more to keep that club out of the sand mm. and keep that accelerating upwards and create some vertical force. Interesting, there. okay. Yeah. Let's hit some, uh, let's hit some pitch shots. 
Let's pitch. Are you gonna throw this one down a little bit or are you gonna throw it up? This is where all of my insecurities on the golf course come out, these types of shots. Okay. So I think I want it to land below the hill, low, kind of like a pitch and run shot. Okay. It's how I would be comfortable getting to that pin right now. Okay. Making contact is gonna be the first part of this. That's where we're gonna focus. There it is. There's all my misses on the golf course right there. I'm glad we were able to replicate that. There's the other miss. Uh -huh. See, I wasn't lying, okay. Okay. There's the other one. Remember how good I was chipping over there on the range? This is like identical to me golfing. On the range, I'm like, oh, look at that nice soft touch hands. Then I get to somewhere that's trimmed like this and I'm like, my brain is. So this is a little bit closer to the sort of lie that you'd see out at. 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But let's see you take a little bit more of an aggressive. Okay, let's go higher. A little bit more, yeah. Awesome. Let's see you throw one up and carry it all the way to the top. I was trying to do that, Max. Okay. <laughs> no. Nice one there. That one's really good. So if we look at this wedge here, all of those are coming off. You can hear the clip mm -hmm. as, as you catch those. So they're sounding pretty good through the turf. There's no divots here. We're not grabbing in the turf. First one, you grabbed a little bit. I think that was a little bit of a nervous, nervous throw there. Nervous is an understatement. Okay. I'm gonna, just for reference here, I'm gonna throw you into this one, and you should see a little bit of a difference here in the way this interacts with the turf. Really good there. So what's changed between this one and the previous wedge? So the previous was the D grind. This one's the M grind. So it's the same sole pattern or grind pattern. It's the exact same grind, just different bounce here. So the M grind has eight degrees of bounce and the D grind has 12, but in the same shape. So we can see from the divot pattern here, as soon as we went to the M grind, we started to see a little bit more turf interaction. There started to be a little bit of grab. You weren't quite getting through clipping at just the ball. There was, there was some extra interaction there. Right. This is the S grind. So we do know that you're opening and closing the face a little bit here. We might be able to get away with this one as well if we needed to. Let's go back to this guy. Oh! Bingo, nice. Okay, let's see you throw one a little higher here. Oh, you want a high shot? Awesome. Really good, okay. Let's see that again. Oh, two in a row? Two high shots in a row? Not as far, I went high. I was getting cocky. Let's see a lower one with that one. There, that was a nice low one. <laughs> <laughs> Skull through the fucking back of the green. So when you go to hit that low one, how are you hitting it? Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's let's think about this. Awesome. There's the shot. Really good. So we're, we're down to two wedges left. Okay, down to two. We're going to be deciding between the S grind and the D grind. Okay. So. You mentioned that S grind seemed to sit down nicely for you. Right. We're gonna take a couple more with those. Let's see the open faced one with that that you were hitting. Let's head into the rough here. So now that we're in the rough here, which of your misses is gonna be more prominent in the rough? Are you gonna see it grab a little bit more in the rough? The rough I have better time getting out of. It's just those tight lies that are messing with my head. Okay. Looking at this, I'm like, oh, I'm, I feel comfortable I could get it up. If I had a miss, it'd probably just be like a short flub. Okay. Like I would probably still get it on the green, but I'd have a 40 foot putt. Okay, sounds good. Something like that. Something like, like that. Like it came out, but it's like but I didn't do myself any It just came out a little favors. bit dead, hey? Yeah. Okay, let's give you this one. So the sole on this one is just a little bit deeper than the S grind. We'll see if this has any, any impact. That felt pretty good. Right away, that got through a little bit better, hey? Yeah, really good. Awesome. Really, really good. 
I just need to take you on the course with me. You tell me how to hit all these shots. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. Is this the winner? That's the winner. Okay, Max, that was a really cool fitting. For anyone that hasn't been fit for wedges, like that was way more in depth than I was expecting. From full shots to short bunker, you really simulated real golf, which is what I would expect in a fitting. What did you pick for me? So in starting with the gap wedge, we're looking at a 50 degree, it got the right ball speed for you. You hit the 12 degree bounce in the F grind the best. The eight degree bounce, your contact was just a little less consistent. We saw some thin, we saw a little bit better, but some, some thin ones in there. And the 12 bounce, you just came in, you got in right through it and you struck it really well. Then into the sand wedge, knowing that you play mostly exclusively full shots with it, the S grind produced the most consistent and the best contact there for you. That was just the way to go there. Nice full sole with a little bit of trailing edge relief if you need it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and bend it one degree weak to 55 degrees. You're gonna get just a little bit extra bounce there and that's gonna help with the gapping towards the 60. Cool. Then we went to green side with the 60 and the D grind gave you the versatility you needed to open and close the face, hit all the shots you needed and it was enough bounce that it didn't grab around the greens and you were able to clip them nicely. So cool. And I noticed a big difference. Even from the wedges that I currently use to now using these, it was night and day. So I'm super confident putting these in play over those old wedges. Absolutely, yeah. The last thing we have to pick. Finishes. Is the finish. Yeah. Let's look at some finishes. So, like we mentioned earlier, we've got the jet black, yep. the brushed steel, and the true chrome. And then we've also got the raw. This is what it comes out with when it comes uh, when it first comes, it almost looks like the Tour Chrome until it starts to rust up. Out of everything you've showed me, I keep looking at this, this brush steel. Yeah, the I've noticed steel. a little bit of a, a draw to that for you. We can absolutely go with that one. I like it. Okay, guys, that wraps up our fitting with Max from Titleist. Ken was here earlier giving you guys a little product knowledge. Thank you so much for helping us with this video, and potentially we'll see you when the new Titleist irons release. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.